Is that actually the, the man who made this video? I really hope it is. It would just be fucking chef's kiss. Uh, I, okay, I respond, I'm biased, apparently. I, I just can't win. On the thumbnails, I can't win in the titles, I can't win anywhere. Our response to Main Man Swian is flawed take on Jin and Kazuya, okay? His bias and clever half-truths. I love how I, I, I remarked upon this earlier, how I sound like a Disney villain. The clever half-truths. Uh, but let's go. Please give me an argument for this character being high up. I'm very white right I'm now. More I'm than sorry. I'm willing to listen, but I've yet to hear anyone come up with anything smart to put him higher. Wait, what video was this? Anything. Like okay, that's not where I would put him. I think the last time I talked about Kazi as a character, I put him and Devil Jin at the exact middle. The exact middle. But I probably did a video like uh, a couple of months ago, half a year ago, something like that, where I probably put Kazuya lower. And again, yeah, I, I don't agree with that anymore, but I, I would put Kazuya at like mid-mid. But I would more listen to an argument of someone saying Kazuya is mid-mid or slightly below than someone saying Kazuya is up here. Like a lot of people say, oh, Kazuya is A tier. I just, I completely disagree. Smart to put him higher. Uh, I should make a response video and destroy Main Man too. Yeah, I'm so happy. Suddenly, I get so little interaction on my videos. Uh, but lately, have... it's like, wow, I get a lot of responses. I like it. I have Jin as number one. Whether you like him or don't like him, is nothing you could do about him because he's number one. Whether you like him or don't like him, is nothing you can do about him because he's he number is, one. Uh, he's number one! He's in, in uh, Tekken 7, he's arguably like top five. Oh yeah. Damn, my hair was short there. Yeah, easy. You were willing to listen, right? Let's talk then, main man. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You were willing to listen, weren't you? Well, let's talk then, main man. He sounds like a gin main already. Oh my god! Our response to main man's tainted take- Why is it always so personal with these guys? It's like, do, do you know how big of a Kasia fanboy I am? If someone has an opinion I disagree with on Kasia, I don't shit my fucking panties. I just go, oh, I disagree. <laughs> it's like, as, as soon as I talk about the Tekken character, there are some mains, they just go insane. I mean, you know, he's probably joking, though. I believe a thumbnail was a joke. I think it's a, it's a joke. Nice one, nice parry. Max damage. This better be fast though, because I'm really holding in a poop here. I'm really old, so it's limited time here. I'll be doing a video response to main man's take on the mission. In a sense of what they represent in terms of gameplay and their respective powers as Tekken character. Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you so much for a whole year. Uh, ble bless you, Lucy. You guys all know Main Man Sui. He's a prominent Tekken content creator. He's a very dedicated and passionate Kazuya player. Thank you. His execution is notoriously world class. And I Thanks. really admire his passion for his character. Because, of course, I can relate to that. I also appreciate his Tekken content in general. And whether you like the guy or not, he's a reference in Tekken. My main issue with I really appreciate that. that. Thank you, sir. There is actually a merit to many things that he says. Okay. And many of his previous statements about Tekken as a whole. Okay, it's not quite as vindictive. Kick me in my old droopy ball sack as I thought. gift subs in the channel. Thank you, Lucy. And about specific Tekken characters are actually legit. But the thing is, when it comes to this guy in particular and this guy in particular. I don't understand this idea that Jin mains feel. I, I, I just don't get it. And I explained it a hundred times. I'm a massive Jin fan.
I don't know how anyone gets the idea that I hate gin. I've explained it 90,000 times in I don't know how many videos. I really like Jin as a character. And yes, he is very strong. And I do dislike what they did with him in Tekken 8. I feel they dumbed him down. A lot of Jin mains don't agree. Even Devilster, who is, you know, this notorious, amazing Pakistani Jin player, feels, oh my god, Tekken 8 Jin is so fucking cool, and they did a great job with his des gameplay design, and I'm like, I don't agree. I think Tekken 7 Jin is a better gameplay design. That's the criticism I've had, but outside of that, I'm like, I don't know, people talk about my opinion on Jin like I'm just constantly shitting on him, and I feel like I'm, I never am. You always have to take main men's statements with a grain of salt because they are mostly biased half-truths, unfortunately. Everyone's statements must be taken with a grain of salt. Every single person you interact with will be biased in some way or another, and that fucking includes me. A hundred percent. As much as I try, I really try to stay objective all the time and try and explain with common sense why I think a certain way, everyone is fucking biased. Everyone. You can try and eliminate it as much as you can, but you can't. And I can actually prove that objectively. So let's address his points and his take on the Mishimas. According yes. to Main Man, this guy is a deeply flawed character. He oh, he is. ranks him as the absolute hardest character in the game to play optimally oh, and yeah. also the hardest character to be effective with. This guy is very, very problematic in terms of flexibility. He has pretty much one game plan or two game plans, that's it. Meanwhile, this guy, according to main man, is an S-tier menace. He's always, always ranked as a top five contender. Insanely he's a strong. perfect character with no flaws and he's so powerful. Only flaw is some range problems on certain tools. Powerful, so overwhelming that he's only limited by those who play him. Doesn't matter the fact that Jin is statistically the character that loses the most in the... This, this is not true though. I haven't said that. The only reason he does not win every single Tekken World Tour against Tekken 7 Power Creep Abomination is because his mains are the ones at fault by holding him back. Entire... Uh, no. He has less cheese than the, the top DLC characters. Uh, and, you know, Akuma, uh, Geese. But it's also because... History. Why would you play Jin when you can play a character that's 10% of the work and as strong? Or nearly as strong. Why? Why would you play of the Tekken franchise? Doesn't matter. The too fact di that Jin is too difficult to play. Completely overshadowed by true, I mean, true as tiers like Feng, Akuma, Giz, Julia, Zafina, you name it. For starters, when you analyze Main Man's stake and his statements, you will realize there is some merit in it. There are some valid truths in what he says. But Thanks. it is so tainted, so tainted by bias and selective blindness that you have to take your own conclusion. But selective blindness... Well... <laughs> Jin is ridiculous in Tekken 8. They dumped him down greatly. Forward 4 has no execution anymore. Anytime you hit a forward 4 counter it, you get the big combo, right? And he is the big winner in terms of new attacks, like his down two. I'm, I'm certain it's going to be nerfed in the beta. I'm 100% certain it's nerfed. But that was the best new attack. And again, yeah, I'm biased. I, I don't know. Am I biased? Like, uh, again, Ni nee said the same thing, right? He said that Kazuya remains Kazuya in Tekken 8. He's not very viable. And he also saw, he also saw the new string. But the thing, the thing with the new string is that it's going to be very effective in like beginner and intermediate and really cheap. Cheap as fuck. But you can't really throw that string against a really solid player and expect it to w win you a match. But I'm sure, again, should that string be nerfed? Yes, it should have zero pushback on the last hit. And I'm really hoping in the beta when we play it, the string has no pushback on the final hit. But yeah, I do have to say that out of Jin and Kazuya and Tekken 8, does Jin look like a stronger character? Fuck yes, he does. 
So what I'll do is, I'll take main man's half troops and turn them into actual troops. Let's start with Kazuya. Kazuya is an advanced character. That is true, main man is correct. You need pristine electric linked god fist block punishment. If your opponent is around minus 14, minus 15, you have to have the execution to launch him. You also need solid defensive fundamentals to duck mid highs. You need solid movement to whiff punish people. Thick boy, what's up? Because he can't really count on effective panic buttons. <laughs> this this is not an effective panic button. So having solid defensive skills is the only way you can extract his full potential. That is also true. Main man is 100% correct on this. Meanwhile, Kazuya has also the most oppressive and brain dead coin flip wake up 50 50 in the entire game. Uh, okay, so th this is his uh, general game plan. So, Kazuya is basically knock you down on your ass. You know, every single punish he does knocks you down for a reason. 1 1 confirmed to knock you down. That, that's where Kazuya shines, that's where his gameplay starts. And he has the most powerful, overwhelming, and brain dead wake up 50 50 in the franchise. Uh, debatable, but he has a very strong 50 50. And yes. it's peaked the moment he received Demon Steel Pedal in FF4, effectively forcing the opponent to take the coin flip so they don't get soccer kicked in the head, and then he's forced to take the coin flip anyway, but now with even less life. Old school cut. Orbital and Snake Edge team better. Dude, there are so many characters in this game now with disgusting 50-50s, but best 50-50 is without doubt Akuma. I don't think anyone comes also, close. Also, yeah, didn't have an effectively synergized ground hitting tool to force the opponent to get up. Since down 3 plus 4 stomp was too slow, reactable, and exposed to counter hit long. Old school Kazuya was relegated to down 3 4 stomp to discourage opponents from refusing to take his way 50-50. Well, he could also float opponents. Uh, the reason he got the, the steel pedal was because without that, his, his general gameplay wouldn't work. Stomp can be side rolled, Stomp is slow, has a bad hitbox, uh, can be beaten by multiple get-up options. Like, they, they gave him Devil Jin steel pedal because they nerfed Oki so much. In the previous games, you could float opponents. He could float. He was so good, actually. P people forget about this, but you know, his Oki, back to four would float people who tried to backroll. Uh, he could, while standing four, pick up. It's, it's like, it, he actually had really disgusting stuff. He was not relegated to simply stomp. He had disgusting stuff, so... They nerfed Oki so much, pick up was gone, so they were like, Oh god, we really need to do something here, because otherwise people can just stay on the ground. They gave him the steel pedal for a reason. Launching wake up low kicks. Now, FF4 can murder people who stay on the ground or try a wake up kick. They made Kazuya Okizeme completely brain dead in Tekken 7, to the point a Kazuya player with much less Tekken skills than the opponent. Always this is completely correct. They simplified the gameplay a ton. Now it's, yeah, hell. Uh, if they stay on the ground, you steal pedal, and it covers so many options. Absolutely, they made it much simpler. In in previous games, you had to be a little bit more aware of uh, different options your the opponent has. Uh, that is correct. Has a fighting chance by resorting to a brain dead lottery that can, I mean, quickly snowball out of control. A Kazuya player less skilled than his opponent always has a fighting chance. I completely disagree. A Kazuya player always has to outplay his opponent, in my opinion. And this snowball effect... Is I know a lot of people will hate me saying that and feel like I'm biased towards this character, but... Uh, in my opinion, Kazuya doesn't have cheese. I, I know it's a really big statement. I think the closest to cheese you have with him is the electric, that I find to be overtuned. It should not track to his weak side. Uh, but outside of that... Oh, and he's unblockable. The short unblockable, that's now, now gone in Tekken 8. Uh, you might feel a Hell Sweep is cheap, you might find a Steel Pedal to be cheap, but I, I just do not agree. It is effective on every single level of play, from casual to professional. Kazuya's 50-50 is effective in every single level of play. Doesn't matter if your ID is Lucky Clove or whatever, hugs and kisses.
Right, but what? So why is Kazia doing so poorly online? What out of fifty characters? Why is he bottom five? Online, in all like online, why do you never see him in tournaments? Just take a moment to think about that. But I already know the answer, and it's because the only type of gameplay he can do is knock you down and then go for this vortex. But against a really good player, it can be hard getting that knockdown. You almost need them to make a mistake so that you can capitalize on. And he has no poking. He has average movement. So when you're going up against a Kuni, for example, or a Jin with strong movement that's poking away and just constantly checking you, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, so I'm just saying, like, every level you can capitalize on the vortex. Well, where, where are these statistics? Where are these statistics? Yes. Or if you are Arslan Ash or Nee himself. You can also notice, actually, if you look at rank distribution, that most of these very tough characters, they sort of cap around Fujin. Like, they're even the really, really talented players. They make it to Fujin, and that's it. And then the simpler characters, DLC, <whistles> can mention Leroy, for example. <whistles> they're all Tekken God, basically. Kazuya's 50-50 will be effective on you. So main man completely disregards that and he only focuses on the most dire aspects of Kazuya gameplay. Like he's the only flawed character in the game by lacking something, which is a proper 13 frame mid poking down forward one. Even uh, when do I simply focus on this? I, try to, I, I, I like stress in every video. Yes, he has a great vortex. In, in what video do I not say Kazuya has an amazing vortex? But I'm saying that's all he has, and it's way too unsafe. Which is why no, no one really plays him in tournaments. It's just way too unsafe. Anytime you try and apply that, it's too hard getting someone knocked down and grounded, and then even when you apply that, like, it's, it's just not that great. You know. Even though he has this and this. He talks like Kazuya's electric isn't broken in Tekken 7 by having the best range and hit- I always say it's overtuned. I always say it's overtuned, and but I wish it didn't track to his weak side. So fall electrics, and also reliably track into the weak side. It takes a perfectly timed sidestep left to actually evade the electric in Tekken 7. He talks as if the most casual sidewalk left is an universal answer to Mishima's offense, like we are in PS3 Tekken, when it's really not the case. So incredibly easy to counter by just stepping. Kazuya is super easy to counter. You step to the left. Yes. E even I stepped uh, Nii's... Uh, I, again, I played a Kazuya mirror match against Nii. He does an electric, like the new electric that has a lot of tracking. I timed my sidestep correctly and I stepped his electric. And punished him. Y you can absolutely step Kazuya to the left. He pretty yeah. much is talking as if every Tekken character is Lily. You often see professional players like a Tiff Butt getting caught by a brain dead hell sweep loop because they are actually terrified of World side class professional Tekken getting... players get casually pwned by Kazuya. Okay. Sleep by a realigned electric or a homing instant while standing two. Dude, Ka Kazuya barely has good matchups. Barely has them. It's just, if you want to win, Kazuya is not the character. Yeah, yeah, no, like, th this character is much, much, much stronger and simpler than this one. Yes. You wanna play. Trash in tournaments, trash online. Yes. He's bottom five online, and in tournaments, I mean, n no one plays him in tournaments, and it's for a reason. It's like Nii nee says, the character just fundamentally doesn't work in high level due to the sidestep left being too exploitable. It's yes. too easy to counter even a really good Kazuya player. Yes. The counterplay is too effective. And the, the, the weaknesses on the character are too glaring. Holy shit. That jump Sergi just did. Did he jump there? And the, the, the weaknesses on the character are too glaring. Great, great reads. Nah, number one. Another one!
I'm literally shattered. Again, what he does to uh, to someone looking at this in a very superficial way, it looks like a coin flip. Or it's Mr. Sergi Master here having amazing reads on Atif Bot. It might look like Sergi is just guessing, but that's him actually outplaying Atif Bot. Uh, a great example of this is, uh, as I said before, you really need to outplay your opponent when you play Kazuya. And I know everyone thinks when Kazuya goes for a 50-50, you take a guess. But I can tell you as a like 25-year Mishima player is that you, you, you do an educated guess. It's like, uh, you can watch my set against uh, this cheating Mishima player, Faribors. It's on YouTube. It's a first to ten. I play Heihachi. I block... I think every single hell sweep he does. He tries a lot of hell sweep, hell sweeps, but I blocked like nine out of ten. Do you think I'm guessing, or do you think I can tell when he's about to hell sweep? Because every player has patterns, right? It's an educated guess. It's never a real 50-50. It's an educated guess. And it's like uh, the best Kazi in the world, in my opinion, is Boa Love, right? He played against Ni nee and has played many times against Ni. Nee. Ni nee usually plays Devil Jin uh, against him, a character, even with the nerfs, I find Devil Jin to probably be stronger than Kazuya due to how all round he is. But again, Boa is known for his 50 50 and how good he is at mixing opponents. When Ni nee played against him in a, in a first to two, Ni nee blocked pretty much every single hell sweep he did. And Boa, on the contrary, couldn't block Ni's hell sweeps. Is it a 50-50? Or do all players have patterns that we can read? Did Ni just show that he's just a stronger player than Boa? I can tell when you're going to 50-50. It's not a guess. It's players playing around with timing. It's not a guess. And Sergi Master should be commended for being one of the absolute best Kazuya players in the world, or flat out one of the best Tekken players in the world. Like, the sidestep left being too exploitable. It's too easy to counter even a really good Kazuya player. Yeah, but again, like, look at his timing with these hell sweeps. Look at how he places these hell sweeps. The sidestep left being too exploitable. It's too easy to count. See that? Oh, he dashes in, back dash, dash. Counter even a really good Kazuya player. He realigns. It's like the and knows exactly when he's about to to get up again from the ground. The counter play is if you think this is just a brain dead, ooh, take a guess. Yeah, but how often do you see world-class players lose to Kazuya? I'm sorry, but Sergi Master, unfortunately, is a very rare exception. I, I never see... I mean, I try and watch most Tekken tournaments. I never see anyone play Kazuya. Like, ever. And when they do, they usually get their ass kicked. A few times, Boa makes it to a tournament. He gets smoked. Electric is still a launcher. I mean, you, you still have wave dash, you know, to realign with sidesteps. To realign with sidesteps. To realign with sidesteps. The sidestep left being too exploitable. It's too easy to counter even a really good Kazuya player. Yeah, he's using realignment there. The counter yes. play is too effective. I wouldn't say he downplays Kazuya. People say, uh, uh, he downplays Kazuya, but that's really not the case because he's honest to the point of recognizing parts of Kazuya's strengths. The issue doesn't lie in what main man says, but rather what he does not say. Okay. Uh, okay, so why is uh, Jin number one? Uh, there is literally... Okay, this video is one hour long. I can't watch a one hour long video. But some interesting things so far, I think. So let's just hear, if he goes into Jin, just let's touch upon that. Nothing yeah. Jin can't do. True, in a virtual sense, 
It's true. He has a collection of attacks we can call perfect. Also true. Back to one is one of the best round closers in the game. Agreed, true, but it's much more than that. Back to one is much more than just a round closer. Of course. I mean, to me, this is the absolute best multi-purpose move in the game. I mean, it's it's back to one is just one of the best moves in the game. It's usually used as a round closer, but it does almost anything. And it's one of the best pickup moves in the game. Uh, it's like Jin's Oki, not super good in Tekken 7, but if you play like Tekken 6 Tag 2, where back to one picks up from the ground, he's one of the best Oki characters. Uh, but it still floats, you know, any Eddie stuff. Eddie hates Jin in general, but Xiaoyu, any of that stuff where they hug the ground or lay, back to one eats them alive. Despite the fact that most Jin players don't use it to its fullest potential, its power lies in... But what are you going to disagree with me on? He says, oh, Jin has this, Jin has this, and he's like, agreed, agreed. And then he's like, oh, main man is underselling back to one, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, but you, but you disagree with me that Jin is uh, not very good, or...? Back to alone, and not back to one specifically. You can counter hit confirm this. This is strength. even you better than main man said, people. you can do this, this, this. You can keep harassing people with yeah. back to alone. Yeah. It goes way, way, way beyond round ending. But yeah, it is probably the best. Absolutely, but it's also because, you know, I can't make a one hour long video. You could, you could talk about back to one or Jin's forward four for 10 minutes. Round but I, you know, two in the game. I try, I try to uh, best moves in the game. shorten as much Assuming as I can. Assuming you can consistently convert counter hits F4, then it's true. Which is really not the case for like 99 Point seven percent of the gene player base, but he. What I'm talking about is optimal gen gameplay. That's why I say it's very, very, very hard. But when you are Daniel Mado, Cherry Berry Mango, etc., the character shines and is S S tier, godlike character. And again, this forward four pickup is one hundred percent consistent in Tekken Eight. No execution required. He completely disregards that as if every gene player can consistently convert counter hit no. F4. Let's look into the past. Gene's F4 was so much stronger than his current version. You have no idea. Cherry Coming Berry Bango is in my chat. Gene's F4 I'm gonna faint. Two nerves in two different fronts. It received a severe nerve on his downward hitbox. Just for perspective, this is old school Gen F4. It was so powerful. Its hitbox was so good. It was a specialized answer. Uh, in, in the very first iteration of Tekken 7, it still hit sort of grounded. Uh, but I think it's at its best in Tekken 8, I would say. 100% launcher, no execution, insane damage with his new combos. I mean, yeah, forward four Tekken eight is just Can't straight up busted. Sense, like, shall we use AOP? But it's already busted in in tech in this game. I mean, how 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 can you sit there and say forward four is not that good? It's one. It's probably top ten attacks in Tekken seven. It's just stupid it, strong. Eddie's relax, Zafina's mantis, Tarantula, and so on. If an Eddie dared to transition to relax on you. Bam! F4. Now, this is what happens. And you were dead, pretty much. The same goes for this. And also this. And also this. This is absolutely unthinkable in old school Tekken. Jin's old school F4 would clip them all out of these evasive stances and evasive moves. Jin's old school F4 was so powerful, so powerful, that his low hitting hitbox allowed Jin to hit grounded opponents on some very specific angles that the Jin player must have been knowledgeable of in order to extract. I don't understand the argument. Current F4 is bad because it used to be even stronger. Like it's full potential or. for Okizeme. 
this property alone made his old school Okizeme completely terrifying. I would say it's better now because in this game you had to Zen cancel to get the combo. Now you don't have to do that. You can just do forward four on its own and maintain distance to the opponent. With the Zen cancel, you always had to work your way up to them and get the cancel correctly. But now you just forward four and you stay far back and you do the one standing for pickup, which a really good gym player will get. And again in Tekken 8, Especially no execution. He could refloat people with back two, confirm one if the opponent tried to back row, front row, or quickly stand up. You just couldn't stand up wrong against Jin. They murdered Jin's Oki. Then came Tekken 7 and they decided, no, F4 will not hit grounded under any circumstances. And thank fucking God, considering they gave you the ability to get the full launch without having to do a Zen cancel. Yeah, thank God that did not hit grounded anymore. But again, in the in the first version of Tekken 7, it hit grounded in arcades, and then they removed it. As you can see, it doesn't hit grounded under any circumstances. Look. The second nerf was the lateral coverage for F4. Back then, provided you created a significant plus, a significant plus, like a plus six or something, F4 would provide you decent coverage to Gene's strong side. If someone tried to sidestep left, you would clip him out of it. Like so. Now, Gene's F4 is completely linear to both sides. If you move one... But I mean, we, we both kind of agreed, I think, that Kazuya's electric should not track to both sides, right? Overtuned. I mean, can't, can't we make the same point on Jin's forward four? Isn't it good enough? Should it really hit grounded? Should it track? It really shouldn't, right? One millimeter sideways, you will step in Tekken 7 Jin's F4. The only way you won't be able to step Tekken 7's Jin's F4 is if he's plus 8 or further on you, like so. See? You can't step it, nor sidewalk it or anything, for that matter. Then came Season 4 and the last nerf, a nerf which would make Jin a completely inaccessible character, which is the gigantic pushback on yeah. counter hit F4. They made it so that Jin would only be able to convert counter hit F4 through the Zen transition. Nah, you can't do a dash once. Their intention was to make Jin completely unable to convert the counter hit combo from a raw F4. So you would be relegated to a down two on the ground. Like so. What? But even so, Jin players still found a way. There we go. Which is the elite conversion from counter hit F4. Yeah. Two things. First, main man completely disregards the difficulty involved in converting. For fuck's sakes, I've said for fucking two years that it's the second hardest staple in the game. Only behind Steve's Shiro. When have I ever said anything other than More that? Counter hit F4. He completely disregards it when he says it's a perfect move and a yeah. But do, do these people even listen to me? I mean, I, I hate, I really want to be nice and listen to what he has to say, but I fucking hate shit like this. I really go out of my way in my videos to explain why I think a certain way. And when you don't even listen to what I have to say, why the fuck are you even making a video? Yes, tier move. He doesn't consider that like 3 in 6,000 gene players will actually convert this. And I'm actually being quite generous. And also, main man will completely disregard the fact that this conversion will lead to a combo of 68 damage at best.
It only does 68 and wall to wall wall travel. Yeah, but the the interesting thing here, Jin main, is that yeah, we got seventy six, Jin got sixty eight. We can talk about the combo and the wall travel, but what's the most interesting is what started this chain of events, right? What started the combo, right? And none of the launchers you just displayed are as strong as Jin's forward four, right? It's, it's the fact that Jin's forward four actually even is a launcher. That's the interesting part here. It's almost an infinite reach mid, but it's safe on block. And if you, if you don't convert, which you don't need to, you do that and it's blocked and you're still far away, very safe, you know, from the opponent, right? What is it on block? Is it minus seven, minus eight, right? It's very spammable extremely strong and then also the fact that Jin if he wants to can do a zen from it zen cancel or or in my opinion or in my opinion the best flow chart in the game forward for zen one plus two it's just, there's so much you can do with forward four the fact that it even does 68 is pretty ridiculous considering how strong it is the launcher itself <sighs> nice. Brian 3 4 is very strong. I don't understand. I, I don't understand the argument. But, um, but certainly you must realize that it doesn't matter if someone does more damage. What we're talking about is how quality the, the launcher is. You must understand that, right? Step four. That all being oh. said, I just want to clarify that despite all the nerfs it suffered, I agree with Mayman. Provided the player can consistently convert counter hit wall F4, it is extremely powerful and probably the most powerful keep out to win the game. Second, I but, okay, thank you. Couldn't you have just said that? I was completely in favor of this nerf. I was completely in favor of it. I actually want it to be like this. I want Jin to be as absolutely inaccessible and you have just said as that? possible as a character. People have to earn this power. This cannot be taken for granted. Okay, so for 10 minutes, main man suck my fucking cock, bias doofus! And then I agree, okay. If a Jin player wants to play Jin, at the highest level, he has to earn this power. Oh I'm always my in favor god! Of that make this video could have been 10 minutes. The more difficult and harder to earn his rewards. Whereas yes. at the same time, I'm against nerves that mess. We agree on Jin. Very strong, but very inaccessible. And quite fair. Okay, so we With agree. The factors of core gameplay and identity. But let's continue then. Electric is one of the best. Um, do everything, multi-purpose attack moves in the game. Yeah, I agree, but you're forgetting that Jin's Electric Wing Hook Fist is not the Mishima Electric Wing God Fist. Not at all. Their hitboxes are vastly different. I... <laughs> <laughs> do you want Jin to have a Mishima Electric? I... <laughs> Please don't go there. I won't even mention the fact that 
Jean's electric wind. <laughs> Please hostess. don't go there. Is an Thank you. It's immediate premature screw, but it is compensated by a higher base damage, 25. The problem with Jean's electric is first, it doesn't have the electric wind god fist tracking. See? No matter how. Uh, Jin's Mishima techniques, you step to the right. That is Demon Paw, Hook Fist, and Hell Sweep. Although the Hell Sweep tracks a lot, unfortunately. Uh, step to the right. Classic Mishima Jin. But if you wanna step all the other stuff, it's to the left, basically. Like his CD1 will, will clip you. It's, it's, uh, it's very tricky knowing how to step Jin. Very tricky. I try to tr treat it as like, if I'm a few steps away, go right, uh, otherwise go left, but it's, it's a gamble, it's just a gamble. How close you are, it will be casually stepped or walked to the right, to Jean's weak side, see? And second, because of No, but no one is going to mindlessly spam electrics with Jin. We're gonna do while standing free, or crouch dash, you know, zen free, <laughs> or standing for... Your, your options are so good. Or back to, it's like, you, you can't, it's, it's, it's rocket science trying to step Jin. It's rocket science. It's high hitting hitbox. It hits really, really, really high because of it. Jin will often whiff the punish if the opponent recovers in a low profile stance. Like, he's recovering from a move that puts him on low profile, so he completely evades Jin's electric. Asphyxia, I'll show welcome. you an example. Compared to Jin's electric, the... Uh, yeah, but that's where your flawless character... No one whiff punishes with electric. It's can, can which hits pretty much grounded almost. There's no, no recovery when we're crouching that is not beaten by Cam Cam. That's your character. Your character has a, an answer for every single situation. Electric is only used in the neutral to basically apply pressure, be it a dash electric or a demon paw, that type of, that, that's your character. You can do the classic Mishima pressure situation. Electric mixed with demon paw to keep them honest or poke or go for a 50-50 or go for counter hit. You have a perfect throw game. You can do anything. And if anyone whiffs anything, you're not going to electric. You have a can-can for that. Machine electric is a fucking wall. It, it's hitbox is a fucking wall in front of you. His parry is overpowered. True. Gene's parry is not only the best parry in the game, but it is also Thanks. the best reactive tool in the game. But there's this, Jean's Perry cannot be used by everyone. Let me okay, so I think I get the gist of this. Jean is super hard, but he's S tier if you manage to pull it off. And that's what I've said in 95,000 videos. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the video, Nova Seiken, I really appreciate it. Um, good shit. I, th I think we're gonna end there. I need to take a shit.